he always manages to come through at the right time. Amen. I received an email this week. I want to read it to you as a preface to the Bible study and the series of Bible studies we're going to begin tonight. It says, Our world is dry. The spiritual drought which plagues the lives and families. Is there a cricket in here? Amen. Brother Ray, grab a hold of that thing, put it in the water tomorrow. <laughs> Our world is dry. The spiritual drought which plagues the lives and families in our communities is profound. With each year that passes, I become more and more convinced of my own inability to adequately respond to their condition. I'm desperate for a genuine move of God. Nothing else will suffice. No man-made production can. A new or nicer building will not deliver. More talent is not the missing element. Only a sovereign move of God's Spirit will bring the answers our world needs. I pray that we would focus on that and cry out to God with desperation for it. But when we start to do so, we must be committed to continuing in prayer. Determination must mark our way. When Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel to ask for rain, he experienced something rather foreign to him, a prayer that brought no results. He prayed and sent his servant to go look toward the sea. And based on his previous encounters, we can comfortably assume he anticipated a report of boiling black clouds swelling up from the horizon. When had God not responded to Elijah's prayer? But instead, all he heard were the dread words, there is nothing. But Elijah exhibited the type of determination we must have in a drought-riddled land when James records of this moment, and he prayed again. A second time, a third time, a fourth time. Each disappointing report had the potential to cause him to stop. Each negative answer could have shaken his faith. A fifth time, a sixth time, he was weary, confused, and hurt, but still he prayed on. And then on the seventh time, a little cloud like a man's hand showed up. Elijah experienced the deluge. He experienced the miracle. He experienced God's work firsthand. He did so because he was determined. And that determination came from one thing above all others. He had heard the he had heard God's voice telling him that rain was coming. With the strength of God's promise in his ear, he refused to be deterred by what he saw or what he felt. What he had heard was more powerful. There is a sound of abundance of rain. We need a deluge. Let's be driven by desperation and marked by determination. God has spoken. Rain is coming. Pray again. Reverend Scott Graham, Missouri District Superintendent. I received it in the mail yesterday, an email from the Missouri Minute. It's a monthly newsletter sent out to preachers and pastors. And it came at absolutely the perfect time for me. Because it's not necessarily the world that I'm worried about. But it's the church. The world is hungry. The world is receptive. The world is responsive. And when they are introduced to the Lord Jesus Christ, they become submissive. But I am becoming more and more convinced of my own inability to adequately respond to when the word falls on deaf ears. I am convinced that the only solution and answer to our unanswerable questions is a move of the Holy Ghost. Is a move of God. When the least distraction and the shortest time 
between the Word and the breaking of the Word or the disregard of the Word seems to be getting shorter and shorter and shorter. I realize that it is not my ability or my talent or even my anointing that is going to make a difference. But it is going to fall upon, the responsibility is going to fall upon the shoulders of each and every one. But it is my responsibility to lead us to a place where we are receptive to the Word of God. And it indeed makes changes in our lives and we get the victory. It is as if when Jesus Christ or God Almighty Jehovah gave the commandments to Moses, it is the same feeling as Moses came down off of that mountain, Brother David, and he had just experienced the finger of God list ten commandments on, on a hard stone. And as he come down the mountain, he saw more than one of those commandments being, being violated before they could even be handed down. And when the people did around the calf because they could not hold out for just a little bit longer. It was a 40 day period. 40 days. A month plus 10 days. And they could not hold out. And Moses in his frustration reared back and threw the tablets down and broke them having violated himself the word of God. And when I kneel and pray and I sat at my desk and I ride around this community praying and talking to God my heart cries out God do not let me throw down the tablets and then the email pops up and the answer comes it's not in a better message it is not in a deeper thought. It is not in preaching something nobody's ever heard before. But it begins with each of us, you and I, on our knees before God Almighty crucifying this flesh. Dying out to the desires of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. It is people that have to get hungrier for God than they are for anything else. They have to get hungrier for God than they are anything else. We will begin tonight. Best I know how. It works. I last taught it in 2013. So it has been three years. We're going to begin again and learn to pray through the tabernacle. Because if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray... It begins with prayer. In the New Testament, Brother Pete, when Paul is admonishing the church, he said, first of all, prayer. It begins with prayer. A move of God begins with prayer. It is prayer when you have to deny yourself. It is prayer when you have to deny even your family and even your job and even your billfold. When you take a block of time out and you say, I am going to pursue God. But it does me absolutely no good to get up here and preach. You ought to pray. You got to pray. You need to pray. You should pray when there's folks among us that don't even really know how to pray. So it is with no anger and no frustration but a recognition that there's one way that we're going to have a breakthrough and there's one way that those strongholds are going to come down. It's the way it's been from the very beginning. It is when the people of God begin to pray. And the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Exodus chapter 25 and verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart you shall take my offering and the Lord spake unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart you shall take my offering verse number 8 and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them 
Verse number 9. According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern show thee in the mount. The tabernacle was the first edifice. The first place, Brother Terry, from the creation of man. Until the children of Israel's time in the wilderness. It was the first place, Brother Johnny, that one could say, when I go there, I'm going to meet God. The first place. There had never been a set place, Brother David, where one could go and say, there I will meet God. I don't know that we can that we can fully understand that being as we got a church on every street corner. But until that time he said let them make me a sanctuary. It was not their idea, it was God's idea. And he gave them a strict pattern to follow through the man of God in a way that it had to be done exactly. I would submit to you tonight that this pattern, this pattern of prayer that I'm going to, by the help of the Lord, lead us through. And I will tell you that I have ordered, I have ordered uh, patterns for everybody. They was, I thought they would be here by today. They did not come. Maybe some of you had them still from last time. This one will be a little bit different. But it's a pattern to bring heaven to earth to take the earthly which is us and move us into the heavenly where we go away from roving rambling prayers to specific prayers that take us into the presence of the Lord that guarantee us an encounter with the Holy Ghost every time there are 40 verses in the Bible everybody say 40 40 40 verses in the Bible given to creation that begin within the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. There are 400, 400 verses given to the tabernacle. There are two chapters in the Bible that are devoted to creation and there are five books of the Bible written about the tabernacle and redemption. It was the only building ever built which never needed improving, never needed remodeling, was perfect throughout its existence. There was no need to continuously improve, change the colors, change the decorations, nothing. It was the plan from God for its time. The design of the tabernacle was given in very minute detail by the Lord to Moses came directly from God. He was the architect. It was his plan. He did not leave it up to man. He did not leave it up to Moses. But he gave him a plan to build a sanctuary, a dwelling place, a place that was guaranteed to meet the Lord. Luke chapter 18, verse number 1. It's not going to be on the board. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. Jesus speaking, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. First Thessalonians 5 and 17, he says it this way, pray without ceasing. And when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, and it was at their request, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. He gave them a pattern. Luke 11 and 1, and it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples, and he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Again, we like to call that the Lord's Prayer, when in fact it was not a prayer, Brother Billy, but it was a pattern to pray. It was a method, a, a formula to follow, not a prayer, but a pattern of prayer. God, God is into organization. From the sacrifices of Cain and Abel, which we spoke about Sunday night, to the ark. You remember the ark? He told him how it had to be made. He told him the dimensions. He told him the material. He told him what was on the inside, what was on the outside, the window and the door, and what was going to be put in it. The tabernacle, of course. Solomon's temple. Many places we see God continually operating in structure as opposed to confusion. That plan for structure, his desire and plan for structure, and I want you to, to, to grasp a hold of this tonight as I have already knelt to pray today and, and ask the Lord to forgive me because it is so easy to fall into a lackadaisical attitude with everything in our lives, but I would submit to you tonight that if you can become consistent in prayer, that it will feed over into area, every area of your life. If you can become disciplined in prayer, if you can become regular and routine, I said routine in prayer, it will then feed into every area of your life. That plan for structure includes us. Do not make the mistake of thinking as the Galatians did. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, that you're now made perfect by the flesh? The Lord does not give you the Holy Ghost and then wind you up like a top and turn you loose. But the Bible says very plainly in Psalm 37 and 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. The only consistent thing about most prayer lives is that they're inconsistent. The most consistent thing about most folks' prayer lives is that they're inconsistent. I'm going to submit to you if your family, your loved ones, your job, your friends, etc., if they learn that a specific time is your prayer time, they won't bother you. So, well, I don't know if it's that important. I'm telling you that it's more important than that. We have got to be men and women of prayer. There has got to be a move of God continually in your life. There has got to be a regular visitation with the Lord God Almighty. It is not. We have got to get away from prayer being just our list of wants and our list of needs and our list of desires and whatever's got our emotions to, uh, troubled at that minute. And prayer has got to be about relationship with God. And we have, for us to get into the presence of God, we've got to learn to pray specifically to get there. Do you think about it? Think about it for just a minute. How many, how many times, you know, Brother David, if we honestly thought about it, anybody that's had the Holy Ghost for any length of time, God willing, has prayed until they got in the Spirit. But how come we sometimes almost act as if we're surprised if that happens? As if it's not a regular occurrence. What I'm telling you tonight, saints of God, I know and you know that you're tired of falling into the same trap, doing the same old thing, fighting the same old battles, and I'm telling you there's a way out of it. And it's through consistent, earnest, intentional prayer. Any 
anybody, anybody with one eye and half a brain can ask the Lord for something when everything's gone wrong in their life. But what I'm teaching you about is the same good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. On the mountain, in the valley, it's the same thing. We got to have a move of God. And we got to pray specifically. We need to learn to pray with a destination in mind. That when my knees hit the floor, sometime in... Sometime in that prayer journey, I'm going to move into the presence of the Lord. Sometime, and you're going to find out, if you will follow this. This is just an introduction tonight. I'm not going to get into the specifics of it because I want you to have your, your leaflet in your hand. Lord willing, you'll have it by next Wednesday. But I'm telling you, we got to have a move of the Holy Ghost. We got people that need deliverance from addiction. We got people that need deliverance from affliction. We got people that need deliverance from a, a, a roller coaster relationship with God. We got people that need deliverance in their homes. We got people that need jobs. We got people that need financial help. We got people that need direction. We got people got all kinds of situations. I'm ready for people to stand up, throw their cigarettes away, throw their pills away, throw their uh, tobacco dip away. I'm ready for them to begin to go home and, and crumble up all their weed and everything and throw, flush it down the commode. I'm ready for them to go home and hug their wife and kids and love them like they really love them, not because it's just something that you're supposed to do. That comes when you get a move of the Holy Ghost. I know this might be a little bit uncomfortable tonight but it's something I've been dealing with because I'm telling you I don't want it to stop it's what I signed on for but you're carrying your burden you're carrying your burden I'm carrying them all and I'm telling you right now it's not pleasurable but it drives you to a place where you recognize and realize I've got to help people learn how to change. And the only way any human being ever changes is in the presence of the Lord. It's a prayer.